if you have not seen my previous video then you would not understand anything in this video so what's the previous video first it is 433 megahertz transmitter and dc bar module on the other hand this is 27 megahertz transmitter and dc bar module made by me so let's check this out which model is better number one this 433 megahertz model can transmit digital data up to 5 kilohertz and my module can transfer data up to more than 6 kilohertz maximum but it is also usable up to 5 kilohertz number two even with Arduino, you can communicate very easily with my transmitter and receiver. Also, if you think you would not receive without Arduino in the receiver section, you can do that too. On the other hand, you can't receive digital data in this way in a 433 MHz module. Number 3. Even my 27 MHz module can transmit and receive voice very well. However, this 433 MHz module cannot transmit and receive voice very well because the limitation of data transfer. Number 4. This 433 MHz module can only transmit and receive up to few meters, but my 27 MHz module can cover distance uh, at least of 1 km which I showed all in my previous video. Even I do some more experiment and if everything is working properly, maybe in future you can buy it from my website. So now the main question is what perfection actually does it have that make it stand out from others model? Okay, let's find out. Lambda. Lambda. Lambda is your answer. This is the main reason my transmitter works great. But now the question is what is Lambda? By Lambda you can measure your specific frequencies wavelength. But uh, what is wavelength? Okay, chaliye dikte hai. This 27 megahertz transmitter oscillate is like this way. Even this 433 megahertz transmitter oscillate similarly. But the major difference is that this 430 TX can oscillate 433 million times per second. On the other hand, my one oscillate 27 million times per second. The distance between two wave is called wavelength. How large the wavelength is that depends on the frequency of your transmitter. Here my transmitter wavelength is 11.1 meter, but on the other hand 433 megahertz transmitter wavelength is only 1.4 meters. This is exactly why my transmitter is win. But uh, how? My transmitter produce very big waves, so that is why my wave easily can pass through trees and buildings. As a result, we can communicate over great distance. Other hand, this 433 megahertz transmitter produce just only 1.4 meter wave. Which means this is very small, as a result the signal will fade after traveling some distance. It is true that distance cover more but it also has its disadvantages. If your frequency is low then the size of your antenna must be increased. That is why in my previous video I used of 80 feet of copper wire for the antenna. But on the other hand 433 MHz only 10 inch copper wire is enough. So now the main question is how to make this transmitter and receiver. Okay, in my previous video I mentioned how to calculate an LC circuit, make a paper coil, how to tune the correct frequency, how to make a perfect antenna, even how to communicate with each other. But that was only radio communication guys. But in today's video will be about how to transfer data via radio. And here you can see I have created an RX and TX circuit for transfer data. First of all, I have kicked out from variable capacitor from my circuit because it is not easily available. Instead, I'm going to use this variable inductor here. This is exactly what you can take from children's toy car. To make the correct inductor, you have to wind 8 time with 0.2 mm copper wire and your coil is ready. So, so finally, our coil problem is solved. Now let's try to understand the diagram. Here this transistor is working as an on-off switch of this transmitter. When the switch is on the transmitter generate 27 MHz EMF. When off definitely there is no EMF. Similarly when the transistor is switched on again the EMF will be generated. Just like that. And this is what the receiver is decoding as a data as a 0 and 1. Let's try to understand the receiver section. We get a very weak signal from the receiver section right. For this purpose here I have used one side of OVM to amplify the weak signal of the receiver. The other side work as a voltage compact to get the correct data output. The previous video circuit and this video circuit are similar with only few changes. On my website you will find all the information about this project including part list and diagram. Again if you have not watched the previous video you might have trouble to make it. Here I will use 3.7 volt battery to run it. Next I connect the oscilloscope to see the frequency. Since I need 27 megahertz so I will tune the 27 megahertz frequency. Because it is the only one public free frequency in India. When I realize my transmitter is working properly so definitely I mount this on off transistor which is for data signal. Ok guys this is the final look of my transmitter and this is the receiver and its job to collect the signal from the transmitter. And I hope you know guys I will install this op amp to modify the signal. Next the necessary component will be installed in this board and this 
is my final transmitter and receiver let's check this out here you can see i have done a servo controlling setup with this arduino and see my servo is working very well with this arduino now i want to control this servo remotely so i will use my transmitter and receiver you might be thinking it is very hassle to make right but trust me it is really easy to make if you have right knowledge beside you can increase the power of your transmitter as you wish but uh, this is a subject of another video i will discuss it in another video